Good morning, dear students. Uh, we are talking about pleasant tissue. Uh, after cell division comes your knowing, and uh, we are talking about various kinds of tissue. So, in various kinds of tissue, we have seen peristematic tissues, uh, protective tissues, and the third remaining tissues are permanent tissues. So, in permanent tissue, are actually made up of uh, two types: simple permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue. In simple permanent tissue, we have seen simple permanent tissues. Are mainly made up of only one type of cells. Means only one type of cells are performing a specific function. While complex permanent tissues are made up of more than two type of cells. It is complex. Means it's a combination of living cells and the dead cells. So both kind of cells are present in the complex permanent tissue. In its name only it is given. It's a complex. Complex means uh, confusing. You can say simply it's a complex. So complex is not. Uh, Two kinds of cells are together. That is, living cells and the dead cells are together. So, complex permanent tissues are actually uh, uh, mainly two types. That is, hilum and the phloem. So, in my previous class, I have explained you the structure of hilum. What the uh, hilum has performed the function? Hilum has carried water along with some important nutrients. Uh, okay, some nutrients are dissolved into the water, or some nutrients are present into the soil. That nutrients means uh, in the fertilizers we sprinkle in the form of NPK, means nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. This is very essential for the growth of the plant. Uh, to get a good yield from the crop, plants require this fertilizers. And as well as humus particles are also present into the soil. And this humus particle, the manures also we are adding. Fertilizers are nutrient specific, means specific kind of nutrients are present into the fertilizer. But manures contains all kind of uh, nutrients in it. So this manures, this fertilizers, and very uh, various kinds of minerals are dissolved into the soil, into the water, and that all nutrients are carried out along with the water from the root or from the soil through root to every part of the plant body with the help of xylem. So this, uh, the function of the xylem, the structure of the xylem, the components of the xylem. Already we have gone through. Now uh, we will go for the next uh, uh, complex permanent tissue that is uh, phloem. So it will be very easier to keep in mind phloem. Phloem is F from F you can keep in mind. Phloem is what? Food conducting. Simply we can say food conducting tissue. Phloem is what? Food conducting tissue. We have seen previously xylem is what? Water conducting tissue. And this is flowing which is conducting food. Now, you are knowing that plants are actually following the autotrophic mode of nutrition. Means plants are preparing their own food with the help of photosynthesis, sunlight, and chlorophyll present in it. Okay? So, photosynthesis process you are quite abundant in it. Okay? So, plants are preparing their own food and that food is present into the leaf. Means this are uh, contains chlorophyll and so that plants are preparing their food with the help of the chlorophyll and sunlight. You are quite acquainted with it. this process all photosynthesis. So whatever the food is uh, prepared, that food is stored into the leaf. But plant require the whole plant, not only the leaf required food, the plant required food for every part of the plant. Okay? Where, where does exactly the plant require food? The plant requires food for the growth of the plant. So, growth is not only taking at the shoot part, no. growth is taking place everywhere. Whereas sometimes plant is injured, right? So, here also some specific kind of nutrients are required to uh, clear its injury or to for clearing out its wear and tear. So, that plant requires food for every part. It is not only for the particular part plant requires food. So, some parts, uh, some food is stored into the stem. You are knowing stem, uh, potato is a very good example of it, onion is a very good example for it, ginger is example for it. So, food is not only present into the leaf, sometimes food is present into the stem part also and into the root part also. So, if the plant is preparing food at the uh, top, but it is stored in the stem and the root. Okay. So, should system prepare food, but it has to reach to every part of the plant body. Then how does the food conduct from the shoot system to every part of the body? So here one more important.
important thing I would like to know you that silent, in this silent tissue we have seen uh, the flow of the water is unidirectional but in the fluid the flow of the water is bidirectional or any direction wherever it is means it is moving vertically it is moving horizontally it is moving means every direction the flow has to reach okay and so that the design of the component is like this somewhat so I would like to know you some components or uh, various kind of cells which make the fluid. So already I told you complex permanent tissue are made up of more than two types of cells, different different types of cells are present. So this fluid also is made up of four different kind of cells. Okay, so I would like to get to know the structure and function of every part of the cell. So first is Steel tubes. Second is first is steel tube. We will see first steel tubes. Second is companion cell. Companion cells and third is phloem. And this carrying the 
when a companion said. You can see the meaning of companion. Companion means what? Actually, these are very good friends. These are good friends of each other. We can say good friends. Or best friends, we can say. Because this companion said is actually held for the suitors. No specific function is performed by the companion cell. It just helps for the suitors because these are very good friends. These two are working together. Do you get stressed? And these companion cells are also tube like. These are also tube like. As well as their bodies also thin. Thin what? And is both combined. I would like to know the suitor and companion cells are. Dead cells because their walls are made up of ligri, ligrified. In my previous high level, also I explained you the meaning of ligri. These walls are ligri, means tough material, and these are dead cells. Okay, so these tubes and companion cells are dead cells, and these are also ligrified, and these are dead cells. Okay, so companion cells no specific function. It is just helping for the tubes. And performing a work of the conduction of food. Okay, so sieves and companion cells are good friends. Okay, now we will move to the flowing parenchyma. What flowing parenchyma does? Flowing parenchyma is a sieving cell. Okay, this is not a dead cell like uh, sieves and companion cells. These are living cells. Second is it stores food. Okay, it stores food. And very important function related to the fluid parenchyma is this fluid parenchyma is also it is carrying the food in a horizontal direction. Okay, as I said to you, it is moving from top to bottom. It's everywhere. The food has to pass everywhere. So here, this fluid parenchyma is lateral conversion of food, lateral transportation of food is taking place into the fluid. Means it is passing from one tube to other tube like this. Okay, this is passing the food from horizontally. It is passing the food. Okay, chloride parenchyma. The function for the chloride parenchyma is giving cell. It store food and lateral transportation of the food taking place into the chloride parenchyma. And these are living cells. Okay. Now we go for the chloride uh, sclerenchyma. This growing cell is sclerenchyma is actually these are dead cells. These are dead cells. Means their walls are lignified, lignified walls. And this sclerenchyma, there is no specific function performed by the sclerenchyma. As we have seen in sieve tubes and companion cells are actually conducting the food. Okay, while growing parenchyma. Is conducting also food and storing also food. Means conduction and storage of food is taking place by sieve tubes, companion cells, and the flowing parenchyma. But flowing parenchyma is uh, no, it does not have to carry a work of storage or work of conduction. Then what it has to perform? Just because of its structure, lignified walls, means stuff, as well as these are dead cells too. So it has to just give a mechanical strength. Or mechanical support to the tissue. Okay, so gives mechanical support or strength to the plant. Okay, student, do you get it? This is a type of complex permanent tissue. Complex permanent tissue that side of already we have seen. This is our fluid. Phloem is actually made up of four kind of components or cells. First is sieve tube. Sieve tubes are the vertical uh, transportation of food is taking place because of its structure. I say it is structure. This is tube like and it is it can be placed for our water because the end is open, which is not tapering. In Sweden, we have seen the end was pointed and tapering, so we cannot keep the uh, that plates for our water. But this can be placed placed for our water because. This is tube like the end is open and at the end of it the small sieve plates are present and these sieve plates contain small small pores on it. Okay, so porous and so that the food can be transferred into the vertical direction.
infection. Then companion cells, companion cells also right involved. No specific function, just helping for the sieve tubes. So sieve tubes and companion cells are called as the good friends or the fast friends. We can say. So red parenchyma is actually living cells. These are not dead like these are all three components. The source force and lateral or horizontal transportation of food is taking place into the flowing parenchyma. Other fluids, fluids, parenchyma are dead cells. It has a liquid.